when you're homeless and you're stuck in an addiction or a mental psychosis out there, you look like death, okay? I mean, I got holes in my shoes. I haven't showered in two months. I can't go to DSHS. They look at me and they send me out. I walk in stores. They're following me around, making me feel even worse about myself because they're like, oh, what's he about to steal? And so many people want to shun you away. People will ignore me, just pretend they don't see it. Probably only once every few days will somebody angrily, you know, shake their fist at me and go get a job, you bum. At first, it's humiliating, but then it's not. Just like digging in a garbage can for food, I don't care, and if I'm hungry, that's what I'll do. When I was on the streets of Bellingham, how I lived through it was a miracle, you know, but I was always filthy, dirty, never showered, uh, fighting every day, drunk every day. Someone stole my dirty laundry, and I quit changing my clothes, you know? I was just hopeless. This was my last resort. Before I checked in here, I had nowhere else to go. There was no other option. It was either this or under a bridge. November 19th was the day I checked in here. Folks living outside rough and ready, that fight, flight, or freeze is kind of their three options when their worlds are collapsing. There's this layer of thickening around their character where they're not going to let people in. Trust is hard won. And as that continues, those survival instincts work against you. It takes some nuance to enter into the mind of somebody that is so hypervigilant and so distrustful, distrustful of institutions, can't trust the police, can't trust the hospital, you know, can't trust the, the mission because it's a big organization or these kinds of things and really trying to enter into their lives in a state of friendship and no strings attached engagement. So our outreach programs that the mission offers, we have our scooters that are going out, we call it Joyriders. Scooters are going out with coffee backpacks and engaging people in the downtown area. We have our shower trailer that's offering showers in the community as well. We have a van that goes out called Street Connect to engage folks that are in encampments. It's sandwiches, it's a blanket, it's toiletry kits, it's relationship building opportunities for people. With guests that are living out on their turf, we're coming to them and we're asking, could we be invited to meet with you? Would you accept us? Would you trust us that we're here with good intention? That's a different kind of ministry. It's a different kind of trust building even. There's a level of humility that our staff have to take on to reach out into places where we're not necessarily invited. I spend quite a bit of time out in the camps, just building the relationship from uh, the first minute I meet to uh, helping them with supplies and just making sure they're okay. And just, just say hi. I mean, a lot of the times people just want other people to care. My faith is definitely part of every day. There's a lot of people out there that might not have the same beliefs as me, might not believe in Christ, but I just want to show them that minute of love and friendship and just letting them know they have a place to be. A lot of it is just showing up every day, you know, or two or three times a week, just being a consistent face in their life and giving it time. You know, it'll take people weeks, months, uh, even years for them to feel that I'm a trustworthy person in their life. The, the outreach van has been an incredible influence on us. Just did wonders for us. And if it wasn't a you know, clean pair of socks, uh, dry bedding, dry bedding, dry bedding, tarps, tents, whatever we needed, they got it for us. He, he, he never tired and he would always find us two, three times a week, uh, make sure that we were okay. Yeah, if it wouldn't been for him, his, his love and his persistence, we'd, who knows? Yeah, they did a lot for us. I mean, 
I was a stubborn one. I didn't want to come inside, but I knew I had to get her out of the elements, out of the weather. And if the outreach team finally talked me into it, we came down around Halloween. That point when somebody wants to come in to base camp and leave their their camp or their the doorway wherever they're staying is it is a feeling uh, that just makes everything worth it. Well, the slogan is reach out and invite in. And I think our outreach uh, department does a great job of doing that. Then when someone is ready, if they're ever ready to come to base camp, chances are, hopefully, they're going to see a face that they maybe already have seen and be able to at least feel that much more comfortable walking through the door or that staff member going outside to chat with them more about what it looks like to be at base camp. Our base camp is meant to meet basic needs and get people in the door and starting to move forward in their recovery in some way. So it's beds to sleep on, it's three meals a day, it's, it's all the other service providers in the community coming in and engaging our people on site. That kind of stuff is uh, really important. And if we didn't have it, if we were just a solitary, isolated little operation, we wouldn't see the success and transform lives that we see. We have a lot of help from outside organizations and agencies. We have Northwest Youth Services, Opportunity Council. We have amazing friendship with the police department and the uh, paramedics, community paramedics come in and they will treat any people that need help. Man, we have a relationship with everybody. And so to come and get help at base camp is definitely, you can have all your needs met for sure. It's really difficult for people, whether they're coming from a tent or a doorway or their own apartment. I think oftentimes there's a challenge with a bit of um, shock, right? When someone first comes into services with us and how everything is structured and maintained by staff. But also having 200 personalities in one building, it can be a, a challenge, but we really have worked to create a culture of community there. Folks on the street feel so not wanted. No one wants to look at them. And to be able to have a space for somebody to feel wanted and a sense of belonging, you don't have the pain of the loneliness. You have connection. and You really create wholeness for somebody. You gotta create a, an environment of connection. There's a lot of great people that are all working together. You know, it's a family atmosphere. A lot of friends are made for life and it's, it's just good to be around people that are all kind of working for the same thing. Uh, they look out for each other, uh, they protect each other, and they take care of each other. I think the, the biggest thing that I want people to know is that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter the dark places you've been, no matter your story, that we are there for you and uh, we love you and we just, you're welcome to come to base camp.